Hello everyone and thank you all for tuning in. My name is Leslie Wolf and I'm assistant professor in art history at Texas Tech University. I'm also curator of the exhibition Layered Voices, Process and Paper in Contemporary Native American Art, which is on view now at the Landmark Gallery in the School of Art at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. I want to take the next few minutes and walk you through the gallery and just speak a bit about the works in this exhibition. Uh, so the exhibition features works on paper by seven contemporary artists, each of whom identify as Native American. Layered Voices was organized in conjunction with the 52nd Annual Comparative Literature Symposium here at Texas Tech that took place in March. Um, and this powerful convening of interdisciplinary scholars, activists, and writers, which I was so honored to take part in, centered on the idea of indigeneity, a conceptual lens that situates the worldviews of indigenous communities as an alternative to Eurocentric ways of being and thinking in the world. As a complement to the symposium's emphasis on literary indigenous languages, we sought to explore the myriad visual languages crafted by Native American artists today. So the exhibition's title, Layered Voices, is a nod to the dynamic interplay that all of these artworks share, both in medium and message. One artist whose work masterfully navigates these complex layerings of influences, voices, and visions is Jean Quictissi Smith, an artist of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Nation. We're fortunate to have three works by Quictissi Smith on view here, including this work titled War is Heck, in which Quictissi Smith has utilized layered processes, which give her work its signature assemblage aesthetic. By piecing together wide-ranging images from Moybridge's 19th century photographic stills to Mexican Loteria cards to a U.S. newspaper headline about war, Quick to See Smith creates a new visual reality in which multiple cultures cohabit the same compositional space. Quick to see Smith often grounds her monumental compositions in some sort of larger icon or image, like the horse or, in the case of this work, celebrate 40,000 years, the rabbit. Here, Quick to See Smith harnesses the universal image of the rabbit, one that has been seen in petroglyphs going back many thousands of years, to reconsider what we include or exclude when we use the term American. The work boldly states, celebrate 40,000 years of American art, which is really a challenge to the viewer, a directive to acknowledge the deeper truths that arts in the Americas have indeed been active for 40,000 years. Next, we have four works by Neil Ambrose Smith, son of Jean Quictissi Smith, and a painter, printmaker, and educator in his own right. Much of Ambrose Smith's work references the intersections of technology, Native American life, and Western frameworks that have been violently imposed onto and entangled with Native lifeways. This futurist aesthetic also parallels Ambrose Smith's innovative artistic techniques in which he persistently explores eco-friendly processes and easily accessible materials for his printmaking and painting practices. In preparation for this exhibition, he generously provided these poetic, insightful notes for each of his works, which I found to be not so much didactics, but really extensions of his artwork. Uh, so I wanted to share some of them here. For the work seen here, titled Modern Love, produced in 2019, he wrote, quote, contemporary love is 3D goggles and you can skip the dating crap, end quote which I think resonates deeply in this moment where we're forced to create intimacy virtually and to really confront his futurist images with a new sense of empathy and urgency. Through these futurist images, Ambrose Smith also stresses environmental concerns. He ponders the overfishing of our oceans, for instance, and the depletion of that ecosystem in the work we previously saw, which is entitled Do Fish Dream? Question mark. In his notes, the artist responds to his own question of do fish dream with the hopes that they do because soon all we will have left is, quote, fish dreams. Next, we have four prints by Navajo artist Michael McCabe. McCabe runs the Fourth Dimension Print Studio in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where he collaborates with artists and also produces his own prints. He primarily works in monotype processes using viscosity and chincole techniques, which are both on view in this exhibition. 
McCabe's viscosity prints, which we see here with their ethereal, almost microbial backgrounds, are punctuated by scratches and smudges, which you can see that McCabe has carefully etched into the plate with his knuckles and fingernails. I appreciate how we see an index then of the artist's physical encounter with the work here. These marks also reference McCabe's struggles with psoriatic arthritis, which has limited his mobility and thus forced him to consider new ways to craft his compositions over the last decade. Recently, McCabe's work has become increasingly autobiographical, even as he maintains a very abstract aesthetic, as you can see. In the Chine Collet monoprint that we just recently saw, McCabe's face appears at center, which he has incorporated here through a Xerox transfer and then layered with many other images that come from vintage papers and letters that he's collected over the years. So the work is both autobiographical and archival in this beautifully poetic way. Next, the youngest artist in the group is Michaela Patton, who works in a variety of mixed media, including jewelry making, and who is a recent graduate of the renowned IAIA, Institute of American Indian Arts, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where she in fact studied under artist Neil Ambrose Smith. Looking at her prints, I think it's shocking to realize that Patton is just emerging as an artist because her work conveys such a mature and unique vision of her Oglala Lakota heritage in which she carefully considers balance and composition and color and puts that aesthetic into conversation with her cultural references. Her work specifically highlights symbols and images of female empowerment, such as the monoprint Her from 2019, um, which we see here, where Patton centers our gaze on these beautifully stacked triangles that symbolize female energy in her nation. We see them here rendered as a kind of backbone in which delicacy and strength coexist. She also draws upon the image of elk teeth, a direct reference to feminine power, which we see in this work here entitled Worth the Memories, which is also from 2019. This rhythmic composition shows an abstracted and stylized rendering of the sewing of elk teeth onto a female garment, which you can see by the beads and string in the image. Next, we have four works by the celebrated Navajo artist Melanie Yazi, who is currently on the faculty at the University of Colorado Boulder. This array of works which showcase Yazi's artistic range comprise collage and mixed media, such as print, paint, and yarn. In this way, Yazi's works are literally layered. In this work, Going Over and Over It All, from 2017, we see a visual narrative that seems to unfold cinematically, in which we are confronted with a series of maps onto which Yazi has affixed a variety of organic and geometric forms. These maps visualize claims to land on settler terms. Yazi's marks literally disrupt that colonial vision with a new plurality of images. According to Yazi, her artistic intent follows the Navajo dictum, walk in beauty, which is to say, walk through centeredness and harmony. The topics underscoring her work are difficult ones about the environment, about life cycles, health and wellness, and social justice, especially for Native American communities, but she approaches these issues almost subversively from positions of positivity, unity, and peace. This attitude is also visible in the distinctly joyous colors and forms of her work that really define her signature aesthetic. Yazi also seems an artist of particular relevance to include in this, uh, in this exhibition for her work engaged with indigenous communities around the world. She travels and teaches extensively to forge indigenous networks and solidarity across the globe. And like so many of the artists in this exhibition, she is a dedicated educator, an advocate, and an activist as much as she is an artist. Now, as we turn the corner here, we come to a unique work in this exhibition, which is a mixed media installation by the artist Deborah Hojola, who's based in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and who belongs to the pueblos of Isleta and Jemez. 
We were fortunate to have her here in January to install this site-specific work, which comprises a series of five hanging scrolls on which we see a variety of printed images, including lithographs and stamps that include both abstract designs and figural forms. These scrolls encase a central hanging figure hovering above a red and white design rendered in clay earth, whose complementarity signifies Hohola's Pueblo affiliations. Hohola formed the female silhouette above from willow branches collected on her walks across her pueblo. Hohola refers to this female form as her willow woman, who references our strained relationship to Mother Earth, in which we take so much and often neglect to give back. Much of Hohola's work tackles this idea of female environmental stewardship, including in the earthen materials that she utilizes. This work also references the tenuous relationship we have to earth through the gentle sways of the willow woman and the scrolls as bodies move through the gallery. So there's a kinetic connection between viewer and artwork here. As an arts consultant and curator, Hohola's research practice informs her artistic work, and many of the forms seen in this installation come from this rigorous study and stewardship of her Puebloan heritage. Last, but certainly not least, we've included seven works on paper by Caddo and Winnebago artist Dolores Purdy. Her style of brightly colored, highly geometric compositions that often depict whimsical or tongue-in-cheek visions of native life serve as striking contrasts to the 19th century ledger pages on which Purdy draws her compositions. These ledger pages, on which we can see the remnants of texts from the 19th century, not only serve to historicize the ways in which we perceive Native Americans in the U.S. imagination, but also directly reference the imprisonment of Purdy's direct Caddo ancestors, who were incarcerated without trial by the U.S. government at Fort Marion, Florida, between the years of 1875 and 1878. These warriors, rebuked for their involvement in the Red River Wars, found respite during their incarceration through these art forms. They became known for the hundreds of drawings they produced on ledger pages, which were previously used to document inventory by the military and traders. These artists used this inventory paper for the subversive act of recording or taking stock of their native victories and feats in a genre that became known as warrior art. Today, Purdy's work inserts a female perspective into this male artistic genre. Rather than conveying images of male bravery, Purdy honors her ancestors through her warrior art with a kind of vivid, playful aesthetic that Purdy relates to influences from Art Deco and psychedelic pop art movements. Purdy's work thus conveys a poignant layering of traumatic histories with innovative visual strategies. I want to thank you all for taking the time to walk through the gallery with me. Before we end, I want to acknowledge the artists who generously contributed their work to this exhibition, also the amazing student gallery and graphic design assistants who made this possible, and to Landmark Arts Director Joe Arredondo and Assistant Director Scotty Hensler. I want to extend my sincere thanks.